The anointing to cast out devils is the anointing upon every believer. So casting out devils, didn't you notice that's the first sign? In my name shall they cast out devils. Simple. That's the first thing you learn to do as a child of God. The first thing you learn to do in exercising dominion over the powers of forces of darkness. Take authority in your home. Take authority in your life. Are you hearing me? Stop this messy business of the demons. They can keep running around you and doing all kinds of havoc. They stay up fights. Some of you don't understand why you have riots in certain cities. Why you have riots in certain schools. The, the, the young students there think they are the ones. No, these devils get a hold of them and use them. They speak to their minds and tell them what to do. I'll never forget a little girl, eight years old. She'll just walk in the house and get a hold of things and throw them and destroy them. I talked to that little girl when someone brought her to me. I said, why do you do it? She said, I always hear a voice telling me to do it. She said, eight years old. She said, I always hear a voice telling me to do it. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I can be looking at a plate on the table and the voice will say, take it and smash it. And then I'll take it and I'll smash it. All kinds of devils. There are spirits of anger. They just get you boiling. You don't know why you're angry. You're very angry today. You just wake up angry. Nobody will cross that line today. And you're unhappy with your anger. You know you're, you're not satisfied with your life. But you're doing it. See, why do these demons, you so say, what do they gain? They try to gain dominion over you. They try to exercise control over your life. Because the more they exercise control over your life, the more control they can have. Until from oppressing you, or rather influencing you, they begin to oppress you. Where you no longer can get yourself free. Then from oppressing you, they can actually obsess you. So you're filled with the thoughts that drive you crazy. And from that obsession, you can become possessed. They take all of your life and make you do whatever they want you to do. And talk through you. Now they can really use your tongue. Use your body. Never, never give place to the devil. We'll come back to that. Hello? Are you still out there? He said, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. I said, scorpions here refers to evil spirits. And these evil spirits, let's look at Turn with me to the book of Revelation. Somebody says, oh, Revelation, I'm afraid of that book. No, it's a good book. Someone said, if you read the book of Revelation, you might go mad. It's not true. We read it all the time and we are still well. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Are you ready? Ready, ready, ready. Revelation chapter number 9. I'm reading from verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Did you ever hear of the bottomless pit? To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit in other words because of that smoke everywhere became dark and they came out of the smoke what did you see again again louder those of you at the back, what did you see? Locusts. Thank you. It says, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. These are evil spirits. Now what did they do? Let's, let, read, let's read on. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass 
of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Hmm. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now listen. He's talking about some form of, I believe, nuclear warfare that's going to take place. And he's letting us know that that is going to be caused by demons when they are let out of the bottomless pit. And he's showing us the modus operandi that they will not destroy the grass. They will not destroy the, the, the plants. And how many of you know about these environmentalists who believe that they must save the earth and they don't have as much faith in the human? And so they are developing such weapons that can get rid of men and leave the vegetation. That's where the world is going. It's all in this book. And it says, they'll be tormented five months. Look at verse 7. It's beginning to describe nuclear warheads now. Watch. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Watch. And they had breastplates. Now watch this. The man is seeing demons that seem to metamorphose into metals. So we have the understanding from this book that all of those warheads will be used by men, but that these things are actually going to be driven by devils. The Bible tells us about demon spirits that Lure men into war. So when you hear about wars in certain nations, they don't come just because people feel like fighting. They're instigated by devils, demons. And that's the reason Christians ought to pray. They ought to know how to pray. And deal with these satanic spirits. Hello. You still there? All right, look at it, verse 9. And they had breastplates as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Hello? Ain't I telling you something? Look at this. And they had tails like unto scorpions. Hey, think again. Describe those little jets. And there were, there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt me in five months. And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, or in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. Praise God. Anyway, the point of all that is this. Why we went there? Just to let you understand when he deals with serpents and scorpions. You remember Satan is called that old serpent, the devil. So a lot of us understand that serpents are likened to, to devils, but many don't understand why scorpions. And I've just read that to you. Demons release from the bottomless pit. Functioning like scorpions, he says. And then he lets us know that in the end times, these evil spirits are going to lure the nations to war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at something else here. Very, very important. Hey, are you taking authority in your life? Yes. Are you waiting for somebody to do it for you? Let's examine four areas in the Bible, very brief scriptures. Firstly, remember what Jesus said. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. Them that believe. He didn't say these signs shall follow evangelists. He didn't say these signs shall follow strong Christians. He didn't say these signs shall follow... Listen... Listen, even if that, let's look at that traffic warden again at the junction. 
Even if he were sick, he still has authority. Hey, come on, talk to me now. He still has authority. Even if he had pains and he was suffering so much pain in his body, he still has the authority. Understand authority, you don't have to feel it. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. He didn't say when they feel strong enough, when they feel up to it. No, he said, in my name shall they cast out devils. Then we read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the ability, over all the power, over all the manifestations of the devil. And we didn't finish it. He said, and nothing, nothing shall by any means, hey, hey, glory, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, somebody said, be careful of casting out devils because it might enter into you. I don't know where these folks read their Bible. It, it looks like they turn it upside down while they're reading it. How can you be casting out devils and the devil come into you? They said, let sleeping dogs lie. Just leave the devils alone. Let them do their game and you do yours and let the devils on the, If you don't trouble the devils, they'll let you go. They won't never let you go. <laughs> That's what they call devils. They'll never let you go. They trouble everybody. That's why they're called devils. They have no mercy. They do not understand the word mercy. They cannot love you. They cannot like you. They do not know how to like you. It is not consistent with their nature to like you. They cannot love you. They cannot forgive you. They cannot help you. They cannot be patient with you. They cannot be merciful unto you. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? It is not consistent with their nature. They cannot help you. It's not, it's not in them. Look, this thing cannot eat food. This loudspeaker cannot start eating. Why? It's just, you can't. I mean, you can't relate them. Devils, demons are that way. They are evil. This is their nature. It is their nature to be evil. You say, oh, why would God do such a thing? How did God make such a thing? God never made a devil. According to the Bible, he made Lucifer son of the morning. And when son of the morning, Lucifer by name, turned, corrupted his anointing, he became a devil. And all the ones that Lord with him became devils. The Bible says one third of the angels. Somebody said, ah, the devil is stronger. He took one third of the angels. No, not like that. Listen, don't reason things with a human man. Use the scriptures. And get your thinking straight. Amen? Amen? Satan is defeated. He is not partly defeated. He is fully defeated. He functions now through deception. If he can get you to believe in his incognito, that is Satan's strategy to make you think he does not exist and he has you in bondage. Many people say, I don't believe there's any devil. Then if you don't believe there is a devil, then you don't believe there is sin. If you don't believe there is sin, you see, this is Satan's strategy. If you don't believe there is sin, then there can be no savior from sin because there is no sin. So there must be no savior from sin. And if there is no savior from sin, then there is no resurrection. And if there is no resurrection, then there is no Life of Jesus. If there is no life of Jesus, then there is no virgin birth. If there is no virgin birth, there's no Holy Ghost. And then the Bible is a lie and there is no God. Look at you. So you cannot say, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, I don't believe in devil. Devil doesn't exist. He exists. He's a defeated foe. He exists. He exists. I said, he exists. Some of you came here with some of them. I'm serious. I said, some of you came here with some demons, devils. They came with you. Now they are sitting like St. Peter and St. Paul. 
because that's the way they behave. They can't start talking because they know I'll cast them out. So they're just quiet and listening, frowning. <laughs> well, they are there anyway. But they can't do nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. The See, they can afflict you with pains. Now, one of the secrets I'll give you here is this. Mostly, I said, mostly. Now, that would be, if I continue the construction the way I want to put it, it would be a little bit of a complex grammar that doesn't, that's not good enough. I wanted to say, mostly, every sharp pain. Now, I should simplify that by saying, most sharp pains. But the reason I would have chosen the first one is because of the strength of it, so you can get it. It's like the difference between the terms highest and most high. You're dealing with the strength of that word. Praise God. All right, now understand it. A lot of times you feel a sharp pain that doesn't leave. It's devilish. Don't submit to it. Listen, we've dealt with people at the healing school. We've seen so many things. Most sicknesses didn't begin with a lot of something big. The large growth started with something like a little boil, a little ache, and a little white head or black head, and then swelling like a boil, and it won't go, and then it's getting larger, and they're wondering what it is, and they're trying to use hot, hot water or something to press it and then just get larger, until the guy works like that, until he can't carry the leg anymore, until it gets so big it fills his trousers, until it's so big he can't move anymore, until he's bedridden, until they tell you it's been there five years. But when it first started, like a little thing, there are ulcers, skin ulcers, other kinds of cancers that show themselves outwardly, wounds that people have that just wouldn't get healed. Just a little thing. And it has become a big matter. Someone just had a little fever. Now he can't walk anymore. And it's been nine years since then. Epilepsy, asthma, these things are demonic. So when you, when you see such things, don't permit them. Don't have mercy for them. You're dealing with a devil right there. Diabetes, that's a devil. Believe what I tell you. Okay? And I proved it. Because many times I cast that devil out and the fellow gets healed. If it was no devil, it wouldn't listen. Are you still there? Yeah. There are things that you have to exercise authority. Don't say, oh, it's my back. Uh, uh, no, it's going to be all right. No, don't act that way. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. What is so hard? For you to just say in the name of Jesus, pain, get out. That's all. Just say that. Just say that. You say, what if you still feel it? Makes no difference. It's got to go. You've said it. It's got to go. It's got to go. It can't stay. Migraine headaches, don't accept them. You say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go. And then go your way. I said you can smile and laugh your way through life. Is this your business that's being frustrated? Look into it. Check it. If you've done everything you're supposed to do, if you've done the right things, and still it's not changed, you might begin to look at an outside force. But be sure you've done everything, put everything in place. You've done everything you're supposed to do. They frustrate businesses too. They frustrate people. 
Then you have to be smart enough. Jesus said, in my name shall they cast out devils. Why was that so important to Jesus? Because of the knowledge of the fact that they are the ones that cause most of the problems that people suffer in the world. And you don't need to go to anybody for deliverance. He's a defeated foe. Don't cry about him. Don't run to anybody because of him. He likes that. He's a proud figure. He loves attention. And when you ignore him, he feels terrible. Don't say, water, water. I don't know if I'm going. Say, ah! You say, but what if you can't really talk out and the pain is so much? Then Jesus didn't say, you shall shout it. She don't need to shout. Get out. Get out. You say, what if you are unable to talk? Use a sign. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes when we're ministering to people at the healing school, you see that. Sometimes I stand in front of that devil and I say, that's it. I tell the fellow, you're free. And sometimes without even making this sign, he understands when I look at him. I look at him that way and, and he knows, I mean, mm. <laughs>